Hi guys, and welcome to Cake Mom TV. Uh, my name is Abby. This is the first of many videos on this channel. I am a busy mom of two, and I bake cakes. It's my passion. I have been baking since I was about nine, I want to say. Grew up in a big family, and this is what I love to do. So on this channel, you'll be following me and my kids. They're going to bake with me. Right now they're napping, which is great. Um, you're going to be following us make a bunch of cakes, you know, and I'm going to share some tips that I've learned in the last 10 years. Wait, I'm not 20. I'm more than 10 years. <laughs> in the last 15 years. <laughs> okay. Um, so today I'm making a wedding cake for some amazing friends, Jeffrey and Savannah. Congratulations. It's a smaller wedding cake, which I love to do, and it's a buttercream decorated, just very elegant, very simple. Today I'll be just doing the baking part, show you how to do it. Tomorrow we're going to do decorating, hopefully, if all goes well. <laughs> um, so it's, we're doing a 10 inch, three, three uh, layer vanilla and a 6 inch, three layer chocolate for this two tier wedding cake. So we're starting with the vanilla. I'm just gonna do one layer right now. I'm gonna be doing a high ratio vanilla cake. These are my ingredients. As you can see, it's very simple. We got some sugar, some butter, a little bit of shortening, uh, some flour, baking soda, and salt right here. Some milk or buttermilk if you prefer, and uh, vanilla extract. In this little tiny, tiny bowl. This is the first time I've used this. Any stand mixer is great, but KitchenAid's last forever. My mom has had one forever and it's been used so many times and it still works. So KitchenAid, woohoo. Okay, so we start with a stick of butter. I prefer salted. A lot of bakers or a lot of recipes will say unsalted and that is because every different brand of butter has a different amount of salt in it. So if you're not comfortable with the brand of butter you're using and you don't know if it's super salty or not, then use unsalted and add a little bit of extra salt to your recipe. And then a little bit of shortening. Not much. As little as possible. <laughs> it's because it's a high ratio cake. If you don't have the shortening, it won't stand up to the sugar content. It's got equal parts sugar and flour. I'm gonna whip this until it's light and fluffy. Scrape the sides down. <laughs> Just gonna be a lot of scraping because you, you don't wanna leave anything behind. So you can tell it's kind of lightened in color, not too much, but we'll be doing a lot more whipping as we go. You wanna get a little bit of air in there, you don't wanna get too much air. You add sugar, a lot of sugar. Look at that. Scrape, 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 scrape. Okay, so now you add eggs. I wanted to leave them whole because I wanted to show you how I crack my eggs because everyone asks. How do you crack eggs with one hand? Well, first of all, you're gonna crack it on a table or on an edge. I don't like to crack it on the edge of the bowl because it pushes the shell into the egg and then you end up with shell in your cracked egg and who wants that? So grab one half of the egg with your two uh, first fingers here and then the other half with your thumb and just pull apart. And that's how you crack an egg with one hand. Now you're gonna add the eggs while it's beating, but you're gonna add it one at a time because if you add it all at once, you will break your mixture. You don't want to break it. This is when you really want to whip it till it's light and fluffy. You don't want it looking soupy like this. So we're gonna whip it for a while. Okay, guess what? The kids woke up. Here they are. This is Amory. And that's Aaliyah. Eating some Cheerios over there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Moving on with the vanilla cake. We've creamed our butter shortening sugar and eggs until they were light and fluffy. As you can see, now we need to scrape down the sides. Scrape, 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 scrape. 
This is a very important part. If you don't scrape down the sides, everything won't be evenly incorporated. You do not want to over mix it. You will have a tough cake. You're developing glutens at this point because you've added liquid to the, to the flour. So don't over mix it, but you want to mix it enough to where everything is evenly combined. So usually at this point I add the vanilla. Look at this cute tiny bowl. Get tiny even in it. <laughs> it's so tiny cube. It's so tiny. <laughs> so then you crank it up for just a second here. And now it's done. Ta-da! There's your cake batter. I'm gonna lick them over here. You can't lick it right now. I'll let you have it when I'm done. Yeah. I'm gonna show you how to prepare your cake pan. So this is where I use a tip my mom taught me, was uh, to save your butter wrapper. <laughs> and literally all you do is rub it around the edge of the pan. You get the edge really well coated in butter. And then you're gonna flour the edge of your pan. Can you put this in here for me? Thank you. All right, so then you just tap it until it gets all around the edge. Making a big mess. I know I am. I try to. That's just flour. It's not gonna taste very good. I try. You may. And then for the bottom of the pan. Mm. So for the bottom of the pan, we use just plain old parchment paper. No, don't put any more in. I'm good. Thanks. And you line the bottom of the pan with parchment. Now, I've been cutting my own parchment paper circles for so long, I can't even tell you. I finally ordered some on Amazon. Totally worth it. Do you need some more Cheerios? <laughs> so now you put this batter in the cake pan. Whoa, there's so many. Whoa, there's so many. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna spread the batter out to where it's even because that way it'll you tap this pan to, to get all the air bubbles out before you make it. It's very loud. You see all those air bubbles popping? So you wanna get all that out before you put it in the oven. Now this is gonna go in a 350 degree oven. No, don't touch. 350 degree oven for approximately 30 minutes. I'm going to check it with a toothpick and I'm going to check it by touching the top. If the toothpick comes out clean and the top springs back when it's lightly touched, I'll know it's completely done. Um, I don't live by the 30 minutes. I just check it when I think it's ready. Okay, so I just got my vanilla cake in the oven and now I'm gonna work on the chocolate cake. This is a recipe that will fill three six inch round cake pans. Butter in our mixer, because as a dear woman said once, this butter is better. All right, so then you cream this until it's lightened a little bit in color. I can tell you guys it's worth waiting on each step because if you try to rush it, it will always fail. I'm not kidding you. If I'm running behind on time and I'm rushing around, I, I mess. that's how I mess everything up. That's when it messes up. So, light and creamed butter, sugar, just white sugar. If you wanna try to substitute with healthier stuff, just beware that you really need a fine granule sugar, okay? So if you use that yummy coconut sugar that's got a very large crystal, it's probably not gonna work as well. <laughs> might have a crunchy cake. Eggs, one at a time, as usual. Scrape her down. Light and fluffy. All right, so now you're gonna alternately add your dry ingredients in your uh, chocolate mixture this time. It's on low. So a lot of times this batter has a different consistency every time you make it and that's just depending on the temperature of the chocolate and water mixture 
when you add it. Mine was completely cooled down. It had a lot of time to cool, so. Don't overmix it. It's okay if your batter's a little runnier than this. Like I said, it's just the temperature of what of your chocolate mixture when you add it. It should still work just fine. This one has a lot more chemical leavener in it, so it's got more baking soda and baking powder, so the rise and the lift is not solely on the batter texture and the eggs and all that. All right, so then you evenly distribute this batter between the three pans. Spread out the batter. Once again, we're gonna tap these. I am going to put them in a 350 degree oven for approximately 30 minutes. Like I said, I'm gonna double check it, once with a toothpick, once with my finger. Once it bounces back when it's lightly pressed, I know it's done. And I pull it out, and you have to let them fully cool before you can decorate. I like to freeze my cakes, especially if it's a wedding cake. I will put the, I will cool them completely, wrap them in plastic wrap, make sure they're released from the pan first, and stick them in the freezer at least overnight. It makes decorating, stacking, trimming, everything so much more precise and smooth and you're gonna get that finish you're looking for. If you've ever had a cake that's kind of curved, that's why. We'll get to that on our decorating video. I got a lot to share with you, how to make your cakes look more like you got it at the store, but in a good way. Um, so that's about it. I'll show you when they're all done. All right, so we're back. I finished baking for the day. We have our vanilla cake right here. It has been cooled, which is why it's on this plate. And these are our chocolate cakes. They're still a little warm, so they're still in the pans. I like to freeze these bad boys overnight. I wrap them in plastic wrap, make sure they're released from their pans. Before I try to decorate anything, I want my cakes frozen. Is that good, Emery? So that's it for today. We'll be back with another video on how we're decorating this beautiful wedding cake. I will include tips on honestly whatever you guys would like. So comment below. Let me know what you want to hear tips on as far as decorating goes. If you want to see more videos like this, consider subscribing to my channel. This is Cake Mom TV. I'm Abby. These are my kids. And we'll see you guys next time. Right.